So this is an AQA GCSE biology video, and it's all to do with monoclonal antibodies, which I know is everyone's least favourite topic, but I'm really hoping that after this video you feel a lot better about it. We're going to talk about how they're made, uses, the limitations of use, as well as look at some hard exam questions. So hopefully by the time you finish watching this video, you're gonna feel a lot better. Now we need to start with some key terms because without these key terms, you won't understand what's going on. So first of all, what is a pathogen? Because this is what you find. A lot of monoclonal antibodies are there to fight pathogens. Well, a pathogen is a microorganism which causes disease. And so what's in place within our bodies to help fight these pathogens? Well, it's the all-important lymphocytes, which hopefully you've heard lots about with this topic. So a lymphocyte is a type of white blood cell. It's able to recognize antigens. We'll talk about what an antigen is separately. And it can produce antibodies. So that's the really useful thing that a lymphocyte does. Notice, and B, very important, it can't divide quickly, which limits its use. Because if you're trying to produce a useful substance, you want whatever's producing the substance to be, out, to be able to divide quickly. Now, if we take a pathogen, like a bacterial cell, it has molecules on the outside of it and these are known as antigens so an antigen is a protein molecule that is located on the outside of a specific molecule could be a pathogen but the crucial thing here is it allows the molecule or pathogen to be identified. Now here is our lymphocyte. And our lymphocyte, as we've said, produces antibodies. Which go ahead and recognise these antigens and effectively and effectively within our bodies, they kill the pathogen. But the useful thing to notice here with antibodies is, look, they are able to attach and recognize specific molecules. And that is so useful. So just to look back, what is a lymphocyte? Well, it's a type of white blood cell able to recognize antigens and therefore produce antibodies. And within our bodies, this is useful because it helps to kill the pathogen, such as this bacteria here. But the main thing here is that it is able to recognize antigens and produce antibodies. So we've already said that a limitation is that it can't divide quickly. So what kind of cell can divide quickly? A tumor cell, remember? Tumor cells feature heavily in the cancer topic. Can divide quickly, which usually is a bad thing, but if we harness it in an appropriate way, it's a good thing. Obviously they can't produce antibodies. But now let's consider, well, how do we make monoclonal antibodies? Well, let's solve the problem from before. We had a lymphocyte, which can make antibodies, but can't divide. What about if we were to add it to a tumor cell, which can divide quickly? So we've got two very useful properties here, where you'd get what's known as a hybridoma. And hybrid, well, a hybrid car, remember, uses electricity and regular fuel. So a hybridoma is simply a cell which combines both a lymphocyte and a tumour cell. So it has the ability to produce antibodies and to divide quickly. And so our next step in making monoclonal antibodies is that we clone that hybridoma, i.e. we make lots of identical copies, many identical 
monoclonal antibodies are made, which are then purified. Now, one thing you'll notice if you've been told this before is that these often come from a mouse. Now, what is the bad thing about that? Well, obviously ethical issues, but mainly, but also you may have issues with rejection because remember, mice and humans are not the same. So just bear that in mind. So what are the uses of these monoclonal antibodies? Well, treatment of cancer. Why? Because the monoclonal antibodies can be used to transport radioactive chemicals to the cancer cell to kill them. Why can they do that? Because the monoclonal antibodies are specific to the cancer cell can be used to identify cancer as well as other specific molecules. And what do those other specific molecules include? Well, so many different. What about HCG, which is a pregnancy hormone? So if you really want to talk about what it can be used for, it can be used in pregnancy tests, these monoclonal antibodies. And why? How is it used? Well, let's steal the language from up here. So the monoclonal antibodies can be used to transport dye to the specific cancer cell or HCG hormone, which is then detected. So the monoclonal antibodies are specific to the molecule. So these uses, even though they sound completely different, they are really sensible if you consider how a monoclonal antibody actually works. So just to highlight it, treatment of cancer, identification of cancer, pregnancy tests. In terms of advantages versus disadvantages of monoclonal antibodies, well, these are kind of like oxymorons because we say that they are highly specific Monoclonal antibodies only target specific molecules. So potentially wide use. However, also mentioned are the disadvantages, which is there have been quite a few side effects, which are unpleasant, leading to limited use. That's why I said it's an oxymoron, because an advantage is that they're supposed to be widely used. And where do those side effects arise from? From the fact that you're using the mouse antibodies. Right, now let's look at some past paper questions. So, first of all, let's define the following term. An antigen is a protein molecule that is attached to a specific molecule, e.g. a pathogen, that makes it identifiable. I could have written that shorter, but I think that's the clearest way of understanding exactly what an antigen is. So what is an antibody? Well, it's another protein, but it's produced this time by the lymphocyte, white blood cell often used to kill pathogens. Remember the steps below to show how monoclonal antibodies are made. So remember, we need to combine both a tumor cell and a lymphocyte, because they're the two cells with useful properties in order to form a hybridoma, which will then be cloned, so copied, to produce large numbers of monoclonal antibodies. So what's the order of the steps? Well, we're numbering them. So first of all, number one, a tumor cell is combined with a lymphocyte 
Number two, that produces a hybridoma. Number three, we want to clone that very useful hybridoma. Number four, the clone cells make a specific antibody. And number five, the monoclonal antibodies are collected and purified. Link each specific cell with its use in monoclonal antibody production. So remember, the lymphocyte makes antibodies but can't divide, which means it has limited use by itself. The tumour cell is just a cell that divides very rapidly but doesn't make antibodies. It's that hybridoma cell which divides and makes antibodies, so mega useful. State two uses of monoclonal antibodies, so pregnancy tests, treatment of cancer. Explain how monoclonal antibodies can be used to help diagnose some diseases. Remember with the diagnosis, it means that we do need some kind of dye attached or fluorescence. and UV light so we can actually view it. So how's this going to work? Well, first of all, we know that the monoclonal antibodies attach to antigen on specific pathogen. So that pathogen, remember, causes the disease. So many key terms here, make sure your answers are filled with them. Monoclonal antibodies are also attached to a dye. This enables the disease to be identified. Monoclonal antibodies are used to measure the levels of hormones in the blood. Pregnant women produce the hormone HCG. HCG is excreted in urine. Figure 1 shows four pregnancy test strips, A, B, C and D. Make sure you look at this key. A positive test means that a line appears in the control window and the results window. Control window and results window. So this person here is actually pregnant. A negative test result means that a line appears only in the control window. So here's the control window. So this person is definitely not pregnant. Invalid test result means that no line appears in the control window. So this one is invalid. It's always good to make sure you're reading every single word and understanding what's going on, particularly with a question like this, which is difficult. So which test strip shows a negative result? Well, luckily I've already done the hard work. It's A. Monoclonal antibodies are used for pregnancy testing. Give one other use. So obviously don't mention pregnancy testing here. You can say many things here from treating or diagnosing cancers to identifying and locating specific molecules. I'm gonna say treatment of cancer. Figure two shows the parts of a pregnancy test strip. So we can see here that the urine is applied here. So you pee on a stick here and the urine's gonna move upwards through the pe pregnancy test strip. Number two is the reaction zone. There are mobile antibodies specific to HCG here. So they're going to attach to the HCG if it's present in the woman's urine. Notice that the antibodies have a blue dye attached to them. So when they start moving, you will visibly see this as a movement of blue dye. Here's the results window. Immobilized antibodies specific to HCG show here. So that shows if you're pregnant, as we said higher up. Number four is the control window, immobilized antibodies specific to the mobile antibodies from the reaction zone. So that's just proving that the pregnancy test is valid, i.e. working. The pregnancy test strip will show a positive result when the woman is pregnant. Explain how the pregnancy test strip works to show a positive result. So... There's so much information in that question. Do not stress here. I know it's worth six marks, but just say A, what you see, and B, like, what does the woman have to do to try and get a positive test result out? So first of all, the woman urinates on the end of the test strip. So we know that's around here. 
and we know that that urine is going to move through and soak through that reaction zone. Then the reaction zone point here tells us what happens next. Mobile antibodies specific to that HCG hormone in the urine will attach to the HCG. So HCG in pregnant woman's urine attached to specific mobile HCG antibodies. And so at this point, we know that the monoclonal antibodies are moving upwards. They have the HCG attached as well as that blue dye. And so what happens in the results window is that the HCG hormone binds to the immobilized HCG antibodies in the results zone. Remember, immobilized means they don't move, they're just waiting for the HCG. Remember that there are other antibodies present which rather than being specific to HCG, they're specific to mobile antibodies from the reaction zone. So they'll effectively pair up here in the control window, which will show the blue line proving that the test is valid. And finally, just point out this bit again, you can literally write this exact point here to get the final mark. A positive test result is shown by a blue line in both the control and results zone. Monoclonal antibodies are usually made using mouse lymphocytes. Candida albicans infection which is actually known as thrush, produces serious symptoms in patients with a poor immune system. Recently, scientists have produced monoclonal antibodies to candida albicans using human lymphocytes produced naturally after infection. Candida albicans lives in the throat of infected patients. A sample is taken from a throat of a patient with suspected infection. The sample is transferred onto a microscope slide. Describe how the monoclonal antibodies in a fluorescent dye could be used to see any candida albicans pathogens on the slide. So how is this going to work? Well, first of all, we use that dye in order to identify the antibodies. What do the antibodies attach to? Well, they'll attach to the antigens on that candida albicans. So the monoclonal antibodies attach to antigens, which remember is the marker on the pathogen. The monoclonal antibodies have the fluorescent dye previously attached, meaning that the C. albicans can be identified under a UV lamp. You're using a UV lamp because we've been told that the dye is fluorescent.